Go, sir. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Bhutan e-learning program. I'm Jipa Tenzin. I'm a teacher at Lothi Lawrence Middle School, Bharat. Today, I'll be teaching you science, key stage three for classes seven and eight. Before we begin our lesson, let us have a look at the speeches. In these pictures, the materials that are shown are all made up of different substances. The material seen in picture one is a common material that is used in roofing. It is made up of zinc. The material seen in picture two used in construction of houses. It is made up of iron. And similarly, the material in picture three is made up of copper and it is used in housework. These substances like zinc, iron and copper are called elements. Let us look at some more pictures. What do you think they are? They are gold coins, silver coin, gold biscuits and aluminium. They are all elements. So today we will discuss more about elements and the symbols and metals and non-metals. Before we move on to learning about metals, non-metals, elements and the symbols, it's important for us to understand what we are supposed to achieve by the end of our lesson today. So therefore, let us look at the lesson objectives. Number one, by the end of this lesson, we should be able to explain element. Number two, we should also be able to write the symbol of first 30 elements using the rule of writing symbol. Number three, we should also be able to differentiate metals and non-metals based on their properties. Now elements as you have learned in your lower classes are pure substances which are made up of only one kind of atom. As of now, there are 118 elements organized into a specialized chart called the periodic table of elements. Let's have a look at the periodic table. In the periodic table, elements are represented by symbols. Now what do you think is a symbol? Well, a symbol is a notation of one or two letters representing a chemical element. Now that we know what a symbol is, it is important for us to also learn about how to write symbol. There are a few things that we need to keep in mind while writing a symbol. Number one, the first letter of the element is usually the symbol of the element. It is written in capital. For example, hydrogen has the symbol H written in capital. Similarly, we have nitrogen whose symbol is N and likewise we have carbon whose symbol is C. Number two, if the first letter is already used for some other elements, then a combination of the first and the second letter is used. The first letter is written in capital and the second letter is written in lowercase. Let us look at helium, for example. Helium is given the symbol HE. Now why do you think the symbol of helium is HE and not H? Well, we got it right. We have seen that H is already the symbol of hydrogen. So therefore, helium is given the symbol H and E, a combination of first letter of the name and second letter of the name written in lowercase. Similarly, we have neon, which is given the symbol NE, because N is the symbol of 
nitrogen. And likewise, calcium is given Ca because C is the symbol of carbon. Now, if you look at the elements in the periodic table, the names of some of the elements and the symbols are completely different. For example, gold is given the symbol AU, which actually has nothing to do with the name. Silver is AG, mercury is HG, and similarly, the symbol of iron is FD. What do you think could be the reason behind it? It's okay, if, even if you don't get it right now. It is because some of the symbols are derived based on the names of the elements in Latin and Greek. Let us take an example of both again. Gold is given the symbol AU because its Latin name is oral. Similarly, iron is given the symbol FE because it is ferro. If you take a closer look at the periodic table, you will also come across some elements whose symbols are neither the first letter alone nor the combination of the first and the second letter. It is in fact a combination of the first letter and the third. For example, magnesium is given the symbol Mg. Zinc is given the symbol Zn and manganese is given the symbol Mn. Now these symbols are given because they are written based on the first letter and the sound of the prominent letter in the name. For example, when we say magnesium, the letter, the sound of the letter G, that's G, is more prominent. So therefore, the symbol is given MG. Likewise, it's for zinc and for manganese. Now that we have learned how to go about writing a chemical symbol, it is also important for us to learn the importance of chemical symbols. Number one, it takes less space while writing the names. Example, instead of writing oxygen, which is a six letter word, a single letter O, the symbol of oxygen, takes five character space less. Number two, it consumes less time. Number three, it is used worldwide by scientists everywhere. Now, let us practice writing the symbols of some of the elements. Carbon, cobalt, neon, boron, bromine, and nickel. Let us practice writing the symbols of the following elements. Carbon. We have a symbol C. Cobalt. We have a symbol for cobalt as C O. Neon as a symbol N E. Boron B. Bromine B R. And nickel. And now, now let us look at elements as metals and non-metals. To understand metals and non-metals, let us look at the physical properties of metals and non-metals. Metals are ductile in nature. 
That means it can be drawn into wires. Number two, metals are lustrous. It means they have a very shiny surface. Like if you look, if you look at the sanctions that is put over as a roof in your houses, on a hot sunny day, you will see that they shine. Likewise, number three, metals are malleable. It means they can be beaten into thin sheets. Number four, they are sonorous. Have you ever tried beating or hitting an iron rod? Well, whenever you beat or hit an iron rod, you will hear sounds. So that is what it means when you say sonorous. Number five, metals are good conductors of electricity. That is why you will see copper wires, aluminum wires used for household wires. Let's move on to non-metals now. Non-metals, they are brittle. It means they break when you hit them or when they fall. Number two, they are non-lustrous. It means they do not shine like metals. Number three, they are non-malleable. Like metals, they cannot be beaten into thin sheets. Four, they are non-ductile. They cannot be drawn into thin wires like metals. And finally, the fifth one, they are non-conductor of electricity, except for graphite, which is a good conductor of electricity. Now, if you look at the periodic table, how can you identify metals and non-metals? Let us have a look at the periodic table once again. If you go towards the right hand side of the periodic table, you will see that the elements there are all non-metals. For example, helium, argon, chlorine, these are the elements on the right hand side of the periodic table which are non-metals. Similarly, if you move towards the left hand side of the periodic table, you will find that the elements present there are metals. For example, we have iron, zinc, calcium. These are metals. That we have come to the end of our lesson, it is also important for us to look back and find out what we have learned in today's lesson. Number one, we have learned the definition of element. We have also learned symbols of elements and their importance. Together with it, we learned the rules of writing symbols. And finally, the properties of metals and non-metals. Now, this is not the end. We have learned about elements and the symbols and metals and non-metals. So therefore, it is important for us to also further learn in our own ways. Right? Therefore, I have a home assignment for you. Four questions. Number one, ventilators are used in the treatment of serious COVID-19 patients. Which life-supporting element is used in the ventilators. Two, explain the importance of chemical symbol. 
Three, how different would our lives be if all metals were non conductors And finally, the fourth one, explore through others how metals were used by our ancestors before 1907. Well, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Stay safe with your family.